Hey, 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 what's up everyone and welcome to a new video. This video is going to be very important for you if you recently got a belt drive electric skateboard. We're going to talk about belt tension. What is belt tension, why it's important, and why your belts are probably too tight. So that'll be the first part of the video. In the second part, I'll show you how to properly adjust belt tension so that it's not too loose and not too tight. Be sure to watch it carefully because again, your belts are probably too tight. Most of you, not all of you. And then at the very end, I'll tell you a little bit about what's coming up on this channel. For example, here is an X-Way Wave and a couple of other boards that are gonna be pretty interesting. Okay, let's get started. So if you have a belt drive electric skateboard, you need to pay attention to belt tension. What is belt tension? It's how tight the belts are. So for example, this belt is much tighter than this belt. See, this is pretty loose and this is pretty tight. This is really tight actually. Yeah, this one is really tight. So when you first receive your electric skateboard, your belt drive electric skateboard, more likely than not, your belts are probably like this. Or, I mean, this one is especially tight, but this one, yeah, it's probably kind of like this. And you might think that that's okay. Like you might think that this is normal and you know, you can ride like this, but there are many reasons that you should actually loosen up your belts. So first you're going to get more range if your belts are more loose and you're going to get less range if your belts are more tight because with tighter belts, the motors have to work harder. Number two, uh, your board's going to be quieter. If your belts are tighter, they're going to be louder. Third reason. So if your belts are more loose, they're going to be less likely to tear. Like imagine a small piece of debris gets into your belt. If your belts are already tight, that's just going to like stretch the belt even more. If your belts are looser, it's going to be easier for that little piece of debris to get out. And so your belts are going to last longer. Okay. I thought of another reason. You know how when you're on the throttle and you suddenly let go, you're kind of thrown forward a little bit. So if your belts are tight, you're going to get that sensation more. Like when you let go, it's going to be like, ooh. But if your belts are loose, you're going to feel less of that. So again, this is too tight. It doesn't look too tight to the untrained eye, but this is too tight. This is about right. There is an exception though. If your board is using 3M belts, then this is probably too loose. But most boards that have come out recently, they all use 5M belts as far as I know. So I've told you about the problems of having belts that are too tight. Now, what happens if your belts are too loose? Well, the problem with having belts that are too loose is that you might not be able to break because the belt could slip. You're going to hear like a grinding sound, like a and you're gonna find that you have like almost no braking power. So it's important not to have your belts too loose, but you also don't want your belts to be too tight. So again, some people are probably gonna feel that this is way too loose, but I'm gonna show you that this is not too loose. So I'm gonna grab onto the motor here and I'm gonna try to turn this wheel in both directions. And I can't, I can't because because the belt is not too loose. This is actually just right. Now let's talk about how to properly adjust your belt tension. But first, let's take a look at shred lights. Look at how easy it is to move the lights from one board to another. So if you have multiple boards like myself, you only need to invest in one set of lights. Check out Shredlights at www.shredlights.com and use discount code DQUAN. So I'm doing this demonstration on a uh, Ansara Black Carve Belt Drive Edition. So I'm just taking off the wheel right now so, I, so that I can access the belt. The wheel is off. So here you can see that when I received the board, the belts were too tight. It's almost always like that. You, you got to remember that the people who assemble the boards they're, they don't necessarily know how tight the belts are supposed to be. Like, remember, these boards are assembled on an assembly line. And some people on the assembly line, they might be very familiar with how electric state boards are supposed to be, and others might not be super familiar. And belt tension, this is one of those things where, I guess, not too many people know how tight the belts are actually supposed to be for um, like maximum efficiency. So it's not surprising that a lot of people get it wrong. And some people on the assembly line, they're probably going to get it wrong also. 
So here you see four screws in, um, in these slots that look like they're kind of elongated. That's so that you can slide the motor around. I'll, I'll show you what I mean in a moment. Now, not every board have belt tensioning systems that look like this, but they're all pretty similar, mostly. Uh, the most different ones that I've seen are the ones where there are quote-unquote automatic tensioning systems, but they're not really automatic. They're more like like um, like they assist you with belt tensioning. You, you still have to do it yourself. Anyway, they, they all more or less look kind of like this. Like I would say 90-95% of belt drive boards have belt, have belt tensioning that look kind of like this. So when you're adjusting the belt tension, you do not need to remove the screws holding the motor, you just need to loosen them. You just need to loosen them enough that you can uh, slide the motor around. Again, they're not all like this, but if they're not like this, they still should be pretty similar. So as you can see, as soon as I've loosened up the screws, the belt has become a lot looser. Now this is probably too loose right now. Um, so I'm just um, trying to see how tight it should be so i've put on a wheel so, okay so this is what it looks like when the um uh, when the belt is too loose yeah so so this is way too loose like if you're holding on to the motor and trying to and trying to turn the wheel and the belt slips then obviously that's too loose so what you want to do is tighten it to a point where the belt doesn't slip without it being too tight either so how do you do that so here I'm just trying to figure out where I should position the uh, the motor. Okay, here I'm, I'm demonstrating what it's like when the belt is too loose again. So move the uh, move the motor out enough that the belt um, the belt looks like like the straight part of the belt is pretty straight, but not totally straight. If that makes sense. Sorry, this is um it's hard to explain. Um, when you do this the first couple of times, it might take some trial and error, but it basically like stretch, like pull pull the motor out so that the belt is um uh, yeah pretty straight, but not fully straight. I'm sorry, I, I'm doing a terrible job explaining, but um yeah, just just watch the footage. Okay, so now I'm about to uh, tighten the screws. Once you've determined the proper position of the motor to get the right amount of belt tension, what you want to do is tighten one of the screws. So I'm holding onto the motor and trying to spin the wheel. So I'm just, I'm just confirming that the belt is actually not too loose. So as you can see, it's really easy to remove the belt when it's at the proper tension. But anyway, yeah, tighten one screw first because you want to apply Loctite to these screws so that they don't fall out eventually from, from all the vibration. I have another video about Loctite. Just uh, click on the link in the, uh, in the top right. I'll also link to it in the description. So take out the other three screws one by one and apply Loctite on them, either on the screws or, or just drip the Loctite in the hole for the screw. You don't need a lot of Loctite, it's basically just like one drip. If you apply a little bit too much, it doesn't really matter, it's okay. So once you've applied Loctite to the other three screws and tightened them down, loosen up the, the outermost screw, which, which was the, uh, the only one that you tightened before, and apply Loctite to that one also. So that's about it. Okay, let me talk a little bit about what's coming up on this channel. So this was not gonna be the video that I was gonna do next, but uh, some stuff changed and I had to like, I don't know, change my plans. So this is the X-Way Wave. It's a prototype. I've been riding it around, giving X-Way some feedback. I'm not gonna review this unit because there, there are gonna be some significant changes. The weight is gonna change a lot. The battery connection to the board, the headlights. So a lot of stuff is gonna change. So it's not even gonna be worth talking about this unit, but let me just show you something that's pretty cool that I think, that I hope becomes standard on electric skateboards. So, see that? I'm braking. When I brake, the brake light turns on. 
just like a car. One day this is gonna become standard. And then over here is a board that I'm not supposed to talk about yet, so we'll skip that. And here at the bottom, you see the Walgo logo? So this is the Walgo AT2. This board has a couple of new features that I also feel should become standard on electric skateboards. And I'm also pretty excited about the Ansra Black Carve Belt Drive Edition. So I already covered the uh, direct drive version. Next, I'll show you the belt drive version. So I actually haven't been riding a lot lately because Shanghai has been raining almost every day, every single day. And even when it's not raining, the roads are wet, so it's not safe to ride. Uh, I, I don't know how you guys in England do it. Even today, I rode the X-Way Wave a little bit in the rain, and after I came back, I had to wipe down the board. I, I just, it's kind of annoying. Hope you enjoyed the video, hope you learned some stuff. If you disagree with anything that I say, feel free to leave a comment. Maybe I'll change my mind, maybe you'll change someone else's mind. You know, my opinions do change. Subscribe for more, and um...